Hindsight is 2020, they say. But does that kind of insight really apply to silver stackers? Yes and no. And that relates to the biggest mistake that silver stackers will make this year. And we'll talk about that and so much more as we explore. There's some caveats to this lesson I want to give you because in the end, you know, the saying is, is that, you know, if we just had the ability to look forward into the future, well, we could see the recent past, which could very well still be the future. In other words, when is the best time to buy? And that's really what it boils down to. As silver stackers out there, a lot of us wrestle with that. When is the best time to buy silver? Now, you've heard me and other channels in this community talk about dollar cost averaging. And that very principle is something that is profound. When you uh, practice dollar cost averaging, you are essentially setting aside any kind of market uh, activity or noise. And really, that's what it is when it's all, when it's all said and done. It's just noise. In other words, we know that the value of this is going down uh, year over year, even by the standards that the Federal Reserve sets for it. In other words, 2% inflation is a constant uh, in our lives. The dollar is a losing proposition by design, it seems, when the Federal Reserve system. And silver is the constant value holder that we uh, look to. And this is why we stack it. It is a wealth preservation device. Notwithstanding, the price does not always reflect that. If you take snapshots of time, uh, and, and in other words, it could be a range or it could be two different sets of dates uh, and silver looks really, really bad. But you can also invert that and make it seem really, really good. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that and and uh, and, uh, and extend further as to this idea of dollar cost averaging. But in the end, what does it boil down to? It boils down to how much silver do you have, how much silver do you need, and how much silver do you want? You have to answer those questions. As for me, well, when I first started stacking silver, I really had no idea. I just wanted it because it looked cool and it was cheap. And in fact, it was even cheap for back then, based off the value of the dollar at that time. I think silver was undervalued a lot when I paid when I bought a, a lot of my silver. Most of my stackable silver was purchased, uh, you know, at a very very low cost. I'll talk a little bit about that here later in the video. But when you think about uh, what you pay for silver when you first started getting into it, it's very easy to get discouraged when the price goes down after you make a purchase because you've been hearing from different areas, different influencers, different media personalities on this and other social media platforms saying that it's just a matter of time and probably a very short amount of time where we're going to see silver just climb up like crazy in price. So buy now, buy now and, or regret later. And that kind of advice uh, is, is an operative, is a fear operative. It, it gets you to buy uh, thinking that, um, you know, you're going to essentially uh, be doing the right thing and you're going to essentially make a lot of money in silver, profit from it. Pretty big profits is what they're uh, saying. Or it's going to save you from an economic collapse, a catastrophe. But in reality, that's not necessarily the case, at least at the very beginning of said economic collapse. That's called an SHTF scenario, by the way. I did a whole series of videos in a playlist called Silver and SHTF, if you care to check that out. It's really eye-opening because I think what's so eye-opening about it is how silver will not play a part in the immediate aftermath of an, of a, of an SHTF type of scenario. But even in an economic collapse scenario, silver may not do very well. But the thing is, is the mistake that silver stackers are going to make this year uh, is not buying silver. Now you have to answer those other three questions. How much silver do I need? How much silver do I have? And how much silver do I want? The first question is how much silver do you have? If you are a beginner stacker, you probably don't have enough silver. 
Um, and that means that, and I would say likely that if you want to really be prepared for uh, a potential economic situation, downturn, or even a collapse down the road, silver will play a role, just not immediately, then you're going to want to have probably a fair amount of ounces of silver in various different sizes, uh, you know, uh, out, you know, and also coins, rounds, and bars, a variety of silver probably, but even if it's just one ounce silver rounds, still better than nothing, but you want to probably have at least several hundred ounces. Uh, to say that was good advice for everybody, no matter what your station in life. A couple hundred ounces is probably good to have. A thousand ounces seems to be a good optimal amount of silver to have in your stack um, to be able to uh, last you for quite a while in the case that you actually have to use it um, as a currency or for barter or that type of thing. About a thousand ounces. Now, how much silver do you need? Well, those are the numbers. Depending on your station in life, your economic, your fiscal situation, uh, those are some good goals to set for yourself. How much silver do you want is a whole nother question because then it becomes really just something that's kind of cool to have in your possession, whether it be to stack up a bunch of bars like this or to get interesting and unique pieces for your for your collection. Collectible silver is silver that you want. But what about the silver that you need? And if you're a beginning stacker and you're discouraged because the promises of higher silver prices haven't come, and by the way, they may not come even this year, this year, and even though I have a fairly bullish prediction for silver this year, none of my predictions or anybody else's predictions um, have any chance of coming true any more than your guess, because that's just what it is. It's just a guess. It may be somewhat of an educated guess, but a guess nonetheless. I've been wrong before, I'll be wrong again, and so has everybody else. In the end, silver is about preserving your wealth of a long course of time. So therefore, when you uh, implement a dollar cost average strategy, that implies that you're buying pretty much on a constant basis on some level. And when the prices are low like they are now, well, it's probably a good time to buy more silver. Now, what does that necessarily mean? You know, silver is resting somewhere just around the $23 mark. By the time you watch this video, it may be a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. In fact, it could be five years from now and it may be where it is now. You never know. It could be a little less than where it is now. I kind of doubt that, but um, let's say this video survives five years and maybe it's only sitting at $24 an ounce. The thing is, is that uh, the low silver prices where they are now uh, are probably uh, going to be um, the bottom of where the silver market is now. Now, I say probably because we really don't know. You know, I could say, hey, you should buy silver now because it's not gone below $20 an ounce this decade yet, um, except for a very brief amount uh, during the 2020, um, uh, during, the, during, the, during the black swan event that occurred back then. And even so, you know, it was very brief and the premiums you paid for them, you are paying well over $20 an ounce for an ounce for silver. Um, so those are the kind of metrics that you can take based off the recent silver market in the past couple of years now. But notwithstanding, things can happen. Things change in the silver market. It's a complex market. There's a lot at play there that could push and pull silver in both directions radically and blow our minds as to how low silver price can go. So I always say that even though I believe we're at near the bottom of the market or silver prices are lower than they should be, in other words, it's undervalued, I think most of us can agree that silver is undervalued to some extent, maybe not radically undervalued if you're the biggest silver critic out there, and there will be some that will disagree with me on that completely. But nonetheless, uh, most would agree that it's undervalued to some extent. So that being said, that means it's probably a bargain to buy it. And folks, as an example of this, I have these and every, everything displayed here is silver that I bought a long time ago when it was much cheaper. I bought these bars. These are five ounce bars uh, for about, uh, about 25, 30 bucks a pop. Yeah, when silver was under $5 an ounce, about $4 an ounce, 
That's what I was paying for these, for these five ounce silver bars, vintage uh, Engelhard bars, bought them as bullion. I have these as reminders that of a time when silver was a lot cheaper. And even you go back into the last decade here, I have this piece here, it's sort of a, uh, a, a desk piece I like to play with from time to time, so it's been toned up pretty good, but I bought this thing for probably about $40 maybe a little bit more, maybe, if that, probably a little bit less, back when silver was much cheaper, you know? I mean, we're talking well under $20 an ounce, uh, you know, $17, $16, $15 an ounce. And so it wasn't that long ago when you think about it. And of course, silver of $5 an ounce, what these were bought for was quite a long time ago. But nonetheless, these are reminders that if you hold on to your silver long enough, it will pay dividends, and the dividend is as a wealth preservation device, um, as, as preserving your wealth. And, um, and that is the thing to, rem to remind yourself of holding the silver that you already do have and to not make the mistake of not buying. In fact, uh, you know, even though I've concentrated most heavily on gold, I still am buying silver. A piece here, a piece there. This is the piece that I got just recently. Uh, it's a very beautiful, privately issued, in fact, this is probably, does not technically meet the standards of generic because it has a mint mark of a manufacturer, which I'm not sure exactly what that means. If that's, I don't know if that's a IN or a, what that privy mark there, it might be Asahi. I think that might be Asahi, Asahi's brand. Uh, but it has a nice frosted finish, a deep a mirror-like background. It would technically be called proof-like, but I tell you what, that's really nice quality. And there's just something about the beauty of silver that thinks shines bright. But um, I would dare say that if you are a stacker and uh, you have the means and the extra income, and only if you have the extra income to buy, and you fall short of the numbers that I mentioned before of a couple hundred ounces of silver at the least, or a thousand ounces or more at the most, I think it's your your you're making a mistake by not buying in this kind of market. When the premiums are low, when it's relatively unloved, that is when you want to buy. That is and I tell you what, I give that advice confidently. Uh and even as such, silver could fall a little bit more than where it is now. Even if it does, hold fast. Do not spend outside of your income. Uh do, uh, you know, obviously, you know, you want to pay your bills and your financial obligations first. But the best advice I can give you, if you are a silver stacker and you have not met those goals, is to take advantage, if you can afford to do so, and buy up silver. You know, you know, the, there's an adage, back up the truck when the prices are low, right? Well, I wouldn't necessarily go that far, but hey, buy some silver. Let's just put it that way. Buy with what your budget will allow. This is the time to do it, folks. Um, and because um, I don't know, I, I have a feeling that we're probably not going to see these prices uh, this low probably next year or even later this year. I could be wrong. As I said earlier in the video, we could, we could be four years, five years down the road and still be in the mid-20s. I kind of doubt it, but you never know. But the thing is, in the long run, uh, when you dollar cost average, if you buy a little bit more when the price is low, you've enhanced that process. And, um, and I like the idea of people uh, doing, you know, um, um, making sure they're not losing money on, on silver if you're thinking about the price. Here's the other reason why not to make the mistake of not buying when the price is low is because not only are you, uh, are you d bettering your dollar cost average, by, by buying when the prices are low, but you are also putting aside some wealth outside of the financial system from which we find ourselves apart and are essentially enslaved in. Why? Because debt is slavery. And this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. Folks, this is a debt instrument and we have to use these. These things are a part of life. The dollar is money. By every definition, the dollar is money, but it's unsound money. In other words, it's bad money. 
And I think this it's a good idea to have a little bit of sound money and good money and silver mentioned hundreds of times in the Bible. A reference in Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution, Paragraph 1, I believe. Gold and silver are money. So there you go. And you have some of that money outside of the system. Well, you are preparing and preserving your wealth outside of the system. And if you lose a little bit on it uh, through your dollar cost averaging at any given point in time, when you add up all of the ounces and premiums you paid for it, it makes it a little bit more digestible to know that at least you have some of that outside the system based off of how the market, most of us believe that market, by the way, the entire system is corrupt at some level because humanity is involved in it. Silver exists and has value in and of itself. Having that outside the system, even if you've lost a little bit, makes it a little bit more digestible. And I hope that will encourage you to keep on stacking and holding on. But it really does no good if you go into debt doing so. So make sure you're fiscally responsible in a manner of making those types of purchases. So let me know what your thoughts are. What do you think about this round, by the way? You think it's kind of cool? I think it's just pretty. And I got it for 26 bucks, a couple of dollars above spot, including the case, by the way. I even got the case for that. That's right. Yes, so I did okay. I feel okay about myself. All right, there you go. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Hope you found this video informative, insightful, and educational. Would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.